No, no. All right. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, a, a, actually, an unabridged version of the presentation is available uh, on, on my blog. It's called terrasemian.wordpress.com. Uh, we can uh, get that out to you guys later somehow. Uh, I want to share a quote with you to begin. If you want to build a ship, don't drum up people together to collect wood. Don't assign them tasks and work. Rather, teach them to long for the endless immensity of the sea. And I think that it is a, a good sum of, uh, of what seasteading is. My presentation uh, was, is entitled Intelligent Design, Genetic Engineering for the Advancement of Seasteading. Genes are nucleic acids together with proteins are the biological uh, building blocks that decode the language of life. Genetic engineering is the scientific alteration of, of those biological molecules uh, for purposes like creating insulin uh, from bacteria. And the, a great example of the feasibility of genetic research is the Human Genome Project, which was completed two years early and nearly half a billion dollars under budget. Uh, when I invest in something, those are kind of numbers that I like to see. Yeah. The, I had a list of, 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 of headlines just from the month of May, mostly pertaining to the medical field. The concept of farming, pH farming, uh, has begun to take hold, particularly in Europe. This is the process of using transgene, transgenics to alter the code of, uh, of an animal to produce uh, a protein or a, a, a certain chemical that, that you need. Right now, production of drugs is, uh, is very costly. And by using this farming, we can produce drugs in the milk of, say, goat for far less in greater quantities. And the, the profit from that is, uh, is, is great, as well as the, <coughs> the, the benefits to humanity as, as well as the environment as well. Uh, unfortunately, I, I, I can't show you the, the, the specs on it, but we have three pillars of progress for genetic engineering. The first for the immediate applications are simulations of those, uh, simulations of the, uh, of the methods and the, the traits so we don't create something and have absolutely no idea what, what, it'll, what, it, what it'll represent. Then we also have the you know, immediate solving problems that have marketable purpose on land. Uh, that, that's kind of, kind of obvious. As well as decreasing the need for imported products on seasteads. And future um, would be cloning and hybridization, as well as creation of new genetic traits and expressions and uh, what I call macroorganisms and living technology. I'll, I'll get that into that in a second. And the immediate applications, I mentioned farming, but there's also xenotransplantation, which is similar to farming, but doing so for creating organs and pigs that you can then transplant into humans, things like that. We also have uh, in vitro meats, which I believe are one of the most promising aspects of that, which not only can create a lot more uh, quantity of food, but they solve humanitarian and environmental crises. Right now, we're tearing down our forests and replacing them with ranches, um, taking oxygen out of our atmosphere and putting methane into it. By in vitro meats, we can eliminate that unnecessary cycle and produce a lot of food for, uh, for, for very hungry people across the world. Now, I believe that seasteading is not just about stepping outside the box, living outside the box, is about thinking outside the box. Applications of these genetic engineering techniques and convergences of these technologies allow us to create two new frontiers, uh, well, really three. There's living technology. Uh, Rachel Armstrong has a wonderful uh, TED talk on the use of living technology to create dynamic relationships between buildings and their environments. I think that is something that seasteading needs to look at 
the concept of arcology, which is mixing architecture with ecology, a, another very apt concept for us. We, we want to build seasteads, they need to be built to last. Right now, too much of our, of our culture of production is based on plans, obsolescence. I don't want to move out into a seastead that's going to have to be rebuilt in 20 years. When you build it, you're going to want to have capital improvements that are going to last for generations, hundreds, thousands of years, possibly forever. There's also the concept of wet glands. When you look at in vitro meats growing, uh, say, you know, beef in a, in, in a lab, you then, you then could get to the concept of what I like to call wet glands, which is actually growing, say, that, uh, that, that milk gland that we were using to, for, to farm, growing that in a lab as well. There are vast, vast amounts of profits that can be uh, available from here, as well as new products and, and new materials. These same glands that we were using for milk, as our knowledge of this progresses, we can create raw materials from these same resources. Now, um, running out of time to, to get into everything, but my end goal for this is the concept of macroorganisms. Using wet glands and intelligent design together, converging these two technologies to literally grow the, what I would call the third generation of seasteads. And uh, again, apologize for the technical difficulties with that, but uh, we'll somehow get uh, access to the PowerPoint presentation so you can see some more of that data and it makes a little more sense for you guys. Thank you.